Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about ramping and slow motion, and, and real slow motion, true slow motion. We all have the ability, and most of you probably are aware that you can slow your footage down. Most any application that you use, whether it's Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or what have you, um, all of those have the ability to slow the footage down, meaning uh, punching in 50% speed or 80% speed. Um, that's a cool feature to have, but that is not a, the best way to get real and true slow motion. The best way to get real and true slow motion is a process called overcranking. That's the term that, that's uh, been around for a long time. And what that simply means is shooting at a frame rate that is much higher than the, the standard or current frame rate you plan on using for the composition or edit that you're working on. So if you're shooting something in 24 frames per second or 25 in PAL, you want to plan for that and the scenes that you plan on doing slow motion, you want to over crank the footage uh, by shooting at 60 frames per second or the 120 frames per second that the Phantom 4 Pro can now do in 1080. A couple of thoughts on this. Keep in mind that um, when you over crank your footage or shoot at a higher frame rate, you are stressing the codec even more. And what that means is the Phantom 4 Pro shoots at a wonderful 100 megabits per second. You know, that's how much information it's able to take in as it processes the imagery as, a, as opposed to uh, the Phantom 3 Pro that's shot at 60 megabits per second. Uh, so that extra 40 megabits per second is really great uh, for processing power and, and overall image quality. But what happens is that 100 megabits per second, when you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you got to take that 60 and divide it into that 100. And that's how much processing is going on for each frame compared to 24 frames per second or 24 into 100, you have much more processing for each frame. Same with uh, the 1080 setting with 120 frames per second. Um, each one of those frames gets very little of that 100 megabits per second to get imagery produced for 120 frames in one second. So today my tests have revealed the 1080 setting at 120 frames per second is pretty much, in my opinion, unusable. It doesn't look good, you know, it looks lower resolution, the imagery is not as sharp and clean and crisp, uh, and that's because it's really stressing that codec, that 100 megabits per second, it's really stressing that to get imagery produced for 120 frames, and there's a give and take with everything, and that's the give, is that the imagery just isn't as good. Now some of the tests that, that you'll see here in a minute, um, I did at 2.7K, uh, at, at 60 frames per second. So that way I'm not stressing the codec out as much. And uh, I have to say that the 60 frames per second is definitely what I would call usable. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't look as good as uh, say shooting 4K at 24 frames per second, letting that 100 megabits per second use as much as it can for just 24 frames in a second. But it's definitely usable. Um, there's a process to doing this too in Premiere Pro. When you first bring your footage into Premiere Pro, before you put it on the timeline, and this is important, don't place it on the timeline yet. Set up your sequence in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And then what you want to do is you want to right click on the, on the footage sitting in the bin in, in, within Premiere Pro. Right click on that and you'll get an option that says modify and then interpret footage. When this window comes up, you want to go down to assume the frame rate of, and then type in 23.976. That way, what it does is it takes those 60 frames in one second and it evenly spreads those out, okay? So it's 24 frames and 24 frames are what's left of that 60 onto the third second. But what you have is true 24 frames per second slow motion. So 60 frames reinterpreted down to say 24 frames, you're looking at approximately 40% natural speed, but in true slow motion. You're not asking the application to slow things down. And you guys may have done this. Have you ever taken your footage and, and tried to do slow motion to it, something that was shot at 24 frames per second, and then you punch in like 50%, and then you play it back, and it's real choppy. You know, the movement is kind of like this. Well, that's because there's not enough frames per second and you're physically pushing the application to make the call 50% speed. So what the application is doing, it's running two of the same frames in, su in succession with each other instead of true 24 frames of different motion in between each frame. So you're getting this stair step kind of 
stuttery thing, which isn't true slow motion at all. After you've done this, you can go back into the timeline and let's look at the clip that we have punched in 23.976 to interpret the footage from 60. Notice now how smooth and clean this is. And on this example, I've used the 120 frames per second shot in 1080, reinterpreted to 23.976 within Premiere Pro, and then placed on the timeline. Look at how pretty and beautiful and natural the slow motion is. Next up, we're gonna talk about ramping. And ramping is when you start with a certain speed and you either slow way down or speed way up. As we've talked about uh, just a second ago, you reinterpret the footage before you put it on the timeline. Uh, to 23.976 if you're on a 24 frame per second timeline. Um, then you bring it in and drop it in on the timeline. Let's jump into Premiere Pro really quick and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, we're in Premiere Pro and the first thing we do is we go to our footage. Right click on that. Now I've already done this, but um, just to go through the, the process really quick. Interpret footage. And you can see it's 119.8 frames per second that's the actual frame the, the file itself but we want to click assume this rate this frame rate and type in 23.976 it'll round it up to 98 but uh, there's where you punch that in and then hit OK and then we've got our clip here on the timeline of the segment that we uh, that we want to use so you'll notice that it's already slowed down we play it back nice and slow so what we've got to do is find our ramp points okay so what you're going to do is come down here to the bottom to the little FX symbol right here and you're gonna right click on that and you're gonna to go to time remapping speed so what we're gonna do is kind of scrub to the place where we want the, the the actual change to occur so about right when he raises his hand so right here I'll hold the command key down you see that turns into a plus and we'll click there notice it puts a little handle here then scrub up to where we want it to come out of that which is about maybe here so we'll click again now if you go over here under the effects controls you see time remapping and speed the clock watch is active and you'll see the two points that we've placed right here and here so there we go. So now what we want to do is go in and grab the speed and speed it way up. So we're going to crank this way up. Let's say, keep moving your mouse up. We're at 500%. So see how short that made this now? It's a good idea to guys too. When you do this, make sure there's nothing on the other side of each side uh, of the clip in the timeline uh, of, of um, of the clip on the timeline itself like other clips have in line because this will move and fluctuate as you lengthen and shorten the time this this piece will lengthen and shorten and you don't want it to overwrite anything if you've got after that that you've worked hard on editing all right so we go back to the beginning now see what that speed looks like not too bad nice and fast okay and then we get to the slow-mo part and then we want to ramp back up so we want to grab the other side the, the center part here this is where our slow motion is happening so we're going to leave that now on the other side of this keyframe we want to ramp that frame or sorry speed that up to about the same thing let's go to 500 percent okay so that way there will be a change that'll occur so it's slow and then boom it flies out now the other key thing you want to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see. You want to add an ease to the movement. You know, right here you can see this line, it's pushed up to 500% speed, so it's moving really fast, and all of a sudden it's going to hit this keyframe and drop down to the 100% uh, slowed down, slow motion. Okay, so what we want to do is, is add an ease into that so it's not so, so uh, hard, the motion's not so hard, so we pull this and look what happens right here it creates a Bezier curve for that ease into the slow motion same thing when you're coming out of it so let's pull this like that 
That way it goes from the slow speed to this fast speed, kind of with an ease to it, instead of just a click, you know, the next frame is all of a sudden faster. It looks more organic this way. So there you go. Let me back out. So that's the basics. That's how you actually create ramping on a clip within Premiere Pro. And what I'm going to do now is let this, uh, this example play with another example, uh, full frame and full render, because this, this is really taxing on the computer um, to play this back in full time. But I'll do this uh, and show you what it looks like full frame so you can get an idea of how dynamic ramping can make the, the energy and motion of the shot. So as you can see, ramping is pretty cool. It really adds a certain amount of energy and excitement to the, uh, to the, to the imagery, but it's not finished. You know, it's just not there yet. It doesn't have that full excitement, and that's because we are missing sound. Sound is so critical when you do shots like these in making this shot. It's part of the shot. You know, oftentimes sound is, a, is kind of an overlooked thing. Sound is what is, is going to make or break uh, certain shots when you're ramping shots. But let's look at the same shots real quick. And what I have done is added a little bit of sound design to the ramping effect. And I think you'll agree that it just makes it so much more exciting and fun to watch. Well, that's all I've got. I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you're new, please subscribe. And if you don't mind, give me a like. And um, I hopefully will talk to you guys very soon. Have a great day.